What's up dogs, Theody here and welcome to another tutorial. For this one, we're going to be taking the pathfinding script and add checkpoints so that the killer can patrol around. This was actually an idea given to me thanks to one of you guys who messaged me over on my Instagram account. So feel free to contact me there. Feel free to contact me down below in the comment section or shoot me an email that's also listed in my descriptions. Heck, if you see me in person. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get to this. So on my map, we have our good old killer clown with his good old pathfinding script that we created in the past video that you can see in the top right corner. And all he does is trigger on event touch for whenever he touches the player, then a game over will be caused. On the map, I've created additional five tiles, which are his patrolling spots that I want the killer clown to move through. So this already tells me that we're going to have to create a database of points. So to do this, I'm just going to create another event outside of the map so it stays out of the way of the killer clown, the player, and everyone else. And I'll just call this Patrol Controller. And of course, it will have to run through Parallel Process. So right here, we're going to have to create our five points. And I'm going to do this with a variable. And I'll call it move, I'll call it patrol x and patrol y. And the reason why I'm creating it as a variable is so that whenever we need to adjust this number, it's very, very easy for us to do. So the first one I think I said was 59, and I'll go ahead and verify right after apply and 59 that is correct and then this one will be the second one 11 13 and the next one 16 14 and of course I'm just typing it all down right now so that it's a little bit more efficient for me okay so we got five sets of X and Y's and again, we want to test for whenever, whenever the killer has reached its certain point. So the first thing we're going to have to do is make sure that our clown is in fact moving. And I know that he is moving through this process here. But I do want it to be all controlled in one event. This way is a lot easier for me to find all the data that I need to mess with or make alterations for. So what I'm going to do is just open this clown back up steal its contents right here and then send them back to fixed and then i'm going to open up that event open this so that i could go to set movement route and paste it all in here now of course we are going to need to make alterations and those alterations is this one so the event id which we can see in the top left is three and he's going to move straight to one, three again to find direction. And this here will be their game variables that we've created. I actually forgot what those values were. So I'm just going to hit OK so I could check them. So it's supposed to be, <laughs> of course, I forgot that. Okay, so their IDs are 41 and 42. So I'm just gonna make that alteration. 41, and then in this one, 42. Oopsies, I said 42. <laughs> okay, so the next step I want to know is when is the killer clown moving and when is the killer clown no longer moving? So that means we're going to have to create two more variables. And I'm just going to copy and paste these two up here. Just because, actually I'll do it before the move route. And I also got to swap it over to the killer clown, of course. Okay, and let's also change these. And I'm going to create two more variables and call it killer x and killer y. 
Man, these coordinates, they're killer. Ha ha ha. And then we're going to change it to killer map X. And change this one to killer map Y. And apply. So now we are tracking the killer's coordinates. And of course, no, not exactly. Now we are tracking the killer's coordinates. <laughs> And we have a moving, and now all we gotta do is test its conditions. Now to keep this simple, I'm gonna create an additional variable. And that variable will be patrol checkpoint. And I'll have this one start at zero. Except we don't actually need it here, so I'm gonna cut it out. And I'm going to open up a conditional branch and it's going to check for when a patrol checkpoint equals zero with a else branch by the way hit apply if it's at zero then we got to check if killers x is equal to patrol x and of course we're going to do the same for the y and there's no else branch so we could just ignore that so if it equals the x and y, and this is checkpoint 0, then I want it to go to checkpoint 1. So right now this set is 0, this set is 1, this set is 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to take these, control, cut, and paste it inside here. So now he has new movement routes so that when this parallel process loops back to the top, the killer will move to this location. So I'm just going to essentially take this, copy, and paste it in, and change its checkpoint routes. So if checkpoint equals 1, let me take these out and grab the next two. Cut and paste. And again, we're doing it all over again. Oh. <laughs> I think I got these backwards. Okay, that was probably a little bit confusing, so let's relook back at our map. If patrol checkpoint equals zero, what's actually happening is that it means that the killer clown has made it to checkpoint zero, and we want to send him off to the next checkpoint. So that's why we're that's why we're alterating the patrol points to eleven thirteen, which is this point here. And I also forgot to increment the patrol checkpoint. So I'm going to do that. And I actually got myself lost in the numbers. <laughs> so I'm going to have to check it out. And the last checkpoint is, of course, going to 15.9. Okay, so you probably noticed that I forgot to control copy and paste all of these patrol checkpoints into each of the spots. But while looking at this, I noticed that we can make this look a little bit neater and cleaner. Thanks to the fact that it is doing the same thing among different else if branches. So I think the better thing to do is to check if the killer X and Y has reached its checkpoint first. So I am just going to cut that out and paste it on top. And then I should check if the patrol if the killer has reached its patrol points. So I'm just going to cut this out and paste it underneath it so that I have separated checkpoint zero from all the others. So now I can cut it and paste it in here. And now I can take this, cut it, and paste it in here. And you're going to see that this will look a lot neater. So I can cut these, paste it in here, cut these, paste it in here. Cut these, paste it in here. And I could delete that, delete that, delete that. And I could take this whole thing, cut it, and paste it in here. And check it out. Doesn't it look a lot more cleaner and easier to read? So now we're checking if the killer has reached the patrol point first. And if he did, then we're going to check the next patrol checkpoint. So I can actually take this, cut it, and paste it underneath here. Which also means that we need to reset it once he reached numbers 
four. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it in here, S minus one. So now, if we were to look at this, we got the tracking of the killer, we have the killer moving, we're checking if the killer has reached a patrol point. If they did reach a patrol point, then he will be assigned new patrol point. Then it's gonna go all the way to the bottom, and then the patrol checkpoint will increment. So now it's gonna go to one. It's, then once you reach one, it's gonna do the same. It's gonna say two. Then it's gonna say three. Then it's gonna say four. And now once it gets to four, that's gonna be the interesting thing because it's gonna reset it back down to negative one, and that will actually set it back to zero. So there we have it. Oh God, where are you going? <laughs> 11, 13, oh right, he's going to zero, zero first because we did not set any numerics to patrol X and patrol Y. So to do that, I'm just gonna copy paste it into a new page so that on this page, page one, I'm gonna copy, paste it, and then take everything and delete it. Hit apply. And then the first location that he will go to is this one up here, which is 15, nine. So 15 and nine. And then I'm just gonna have it use a self switch A and this one will be locked by self switch A. Okay, so now it will run through this first, and then the killer will patrol through his checkpoints. And boom. Hmm. Okay, so this is weird, but this movement route you want on the bottom after you test the conditions for killer X and patrol X and likewise for killer Y and patrol Y. And I can't really explain it, but from what I was able to figure out was that if this is above, then technically once the killer gets into its spot, it's still trying to pathfind. It's trying to move the killer to its designated location. It's always constantly moving. So if you made it to your spot, then what's RPG Maker going to do? It's going to nudge it backwards a step and then back into its position. Now it's gonna do this so rapidly or so minusculely that we don't actually notice it visually. So the killer, its data moves back and then goes back into its spot. And it does this so fast between the lines of code that the either the X or the Y will never be equal. It's it's weird, and I, I don't really understand it. But that's what I was able to tell just by looking at uh, the debugging process. But now that is below the if branch, we are going to see that it does indeed work. So checkpoint zero, all right, checkpoint one. Good job, checkpoint two. <laughs> there you are. Checkpoint four and checkpoint five. Then I'm gonna try and block him. Ha ha, oh, he dodged me <laughs> going back to checkpoint zero. And the loop continues for all eternity. And the best part of it all is that he still has freedom to whatever his event trigger will do upon touching the player. So if you guys have seen my aura tutorial, then guess what? You can actually put that inside of here and see it all work together like magic. 
All right, there you guys have it, patrolling with the pathfinding script. Thank you so very much again for suggesting the idea to me. You know who you are. And other than that, if you enjoy this video, a like would be very much appreciated. The YouTube algorithm will like it a lot and will help push this video out to anyone else who may need it. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. If you're interested in seeing what I'm creating, down in the descriptions below. All right, till the next one. Let's